so this next story that we're going to talk about now, it um, it kind of makes me want to kill myself. <laughs> Because it's so stupid, like, you'd think it's a parody, but it's real, because of course it is. So because we live in a late-stage capitalist society, you know, the concern with income and wealth inequality, at least among the ruling class, isn't that, you know, working class people have so little as a direct result of them having so much. No, what they're concerned with, of course, is themselves. They're concerned that, um... There is now discrimination against them, them being rich people, elites, the ruling class. Yes, discrimination and uh, prejudice, if you will, against rich people is now a thing that rich people have introduced into the world. And one rich person in particular is taking this victim complex, this persecution complex to the next level because she decided to write an entire book about how bad it is to be a rich person, titled, We Need to Talk, a memoir about wealth. And in this book, as the New York Post explains, she is going to talk about how hard it is to be rich. <laughs> sure, Jan. Okay, well, hey, um, I hope that rich people are watching this because I'm going to solve all of your problems right now. There's a really easy solution. Just give away all of your wealth. Stop being rich. Poor people can't stop being poor in spite of how difficult it is to be poor. So you can just stop being rich. Give away everything you own. We know that it's not that difficult to be rich. In fact, we know, I know that you know that it's actually really nice to be rich. Because if it were so difficult to be rich, as difficult as you say it is, you would not be rich. You would give away your money and live more frugally. But because you have the wealth, now you want everyone else, as they have less and less, to think of you as more of a victim. Well, no, I'm sorry. Whatever problems you have as a rich person, it's not as bad because you have wealth. The insecurities that you may feel as a human being, those may still exist if you have money, but you also have money, so that therefore will make your life better. I mean, poor people have all of these same things, it's not like we're saying that you having money automatically means you're going to have a perfect life, but does it make your life better? Damn right it does. And we know it does because that's why you have so much money. If being rich was so difficult, then we wouldn't have rich people. They would give away all of their money if there was so much discrimination against them. But because people are flaunting their wealth so frequently in our late stage capitalist society, um... It's not that bad to be rich. Not only are you able to consume until your heart's content, but you also are protected from the incoming climate catastrophe. If you live in a community where your drinking water is poisoned with lead pipes, you can just move. Literally, it's that easy. So, I mean, you have protection, you can have fun and do whatever you want, but apparently I don't know what I'm talking about because it's really difficult to be rich. So the New York Post put together a, a video where she kind of broke it down. She gave us the Cliff Notes version of her book, and uh, this is pretty insufferable. When I was 25, I took a job at Microsoft and got really lucky. I met my husband, David, and the stock options I was granted were worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Six years later, when David joined a small, unknown startup called Amazon.com, I got lucky again. We both did. The company went public, we were in our early 30s, and we had tens of millions of dollars. Life must have been great, right? But soon I learned that millions of dollars doesn't have the power to change everything. My days weren't perfect. I was still me. I hadn't escaped my worries or insecurities. My feelings still got hurt. More than that, my identity and place in the world were at stake. People looked at me differently. After growing up with middle-class values, saving my pennies, wary of the rich, I was embarrassed. Over the last decades, I've worried about spoiling our children. I've been shocked to have friends ask for $25,000, and I've discovered that philanthropy isn't as straightforward as just writing a check. No one discusses these doubts and dilemmas, but there are millions of Americans like me. By the end of 2016, 11 million U.S. households had a net worth of a million dollars. And that's not including their homes. The numbers are growing, too. 
By the end of 2017, the number of millionaire households had increased by over 600,000. And most with wealth are new to the experience. Eight out of 10 grew up middle class or poor. Many books offer advice on how to get rich. Some inspire us with a fantasy of being rich. Others poke fun at the rich. For the first time, We Need to Talk offers an honest look at what it's really like to be rich. I'm not an economist or a politician. I'm not some poor little rich girl either. I'm telling my story to get us talking. And I interviewed 11 women and included their voices to offer different perspectives. We're learning to talk about gender, race, and sexual orientation. I hope to help us learn to talk about money too. Conversations bring us together. Silence perpetuates divides and keeps us stuck in an us versus them mindset. When we need to remember what is fundamental, we're all 99% the same. Are you serious? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> this lady can't be serious. Wow. Wow. I hate her so much. <laughs> If she sees this, which she won't, but if she sees this, she's going to say, he's proving my point. Um, yeah, I hope you're discriminated against. I hope that people um, make fun of you for being rich. <laughs> because fuck you. Like, in case you missed it at the end, she literally compared gender, sexual orientation, and race to being wealthy. As if being wealthy makes you similarly situated to a marginalized community. As if being rich lends to a life of discrimination comparable to being a black American. Oh my god. Oh my god. This lady is delusional. Now, a couple things she said stood out to me. She said, I hadn't escaped my worries or insecurities. My feelings still got hurt. Well, it's not like being rich is going to shield you from, um, you know, getting your feelings hurt. You're still a human being, obviously. But we also have these same feelings of emotion. It's just the difference is that you have a lot of money to make you feel a lot better, right? So if your feelings get hurt, you can, uh, I don't know, go on a vacation as long as you want to. You can stop working for the rest of your life if your feelings get hurt, whereas the working class, they don't have that luxury. So it's not like we're saying, oh, well, you're a robot and all of your problems as an individual human being are solved if you're rich. Nobody's alleging that. But what we're saying is that all of the struggles of everyday life are not as big of an issue if you are rich, if you have that money, because Obviously, uh, she also said, over the last decade, I've been worried about spoiling my children. Oh, well, God, you know, I was really feeling bad for the parents of children who live in Flint, Michigan, who haven't had clean drinking water in like five years. But you having to worry about spoiling your children too much, that really is a bigger issue. I mean, it must be so difficult to try to determine whether or not you're going to give your kids a $25,000 a month allowance or a $30,000 a month allowance. I mean, that must be such a difficult decision. I can't imagine what you're going through. Now, obviously, in that video, she didn't specifically establish why it's so difficult to be rich because it's not. But the article kind of um, explores this a little bit further. Um, and I want to get into that because there's some gems in this article as well. So as the New York Post's Kirsten Fleming writes, being extremely wealthy isn't the carefree, champagne-soaked free-for-all you might imagine it to be, at least according to Jennifer Risher. She and her husband, David, earned tens of millions of dollars in the tech world before the ages of 35 and suddenly found themselves in an elite tax bracket without a manual on how to navigate the potential pitfalls of isolation and strained social relationships. Relationships. We see wealth from a really narrow perspective, the glitz, the glamour, and the greed, but we don't see the reality Risher, 55, told The Post. Money is a taboo subject, but it really shouldn't be. The mother of two calls her new book a coming out as rich. <laughs> what the fuck? 
<laughs> something she had previously struggled with. Oh, you poor thing. Uh, but while she shied away from talking about it, she learned to embrace excess. Oh, I bet. Including private jets, a lavish wardrobe makeover, and a second home in the Napa Valley. Still, Risher, who grew up with frugal parents, began worrying about the impact money was having on her children. The family started flying commercial, with our six-year-old wondering if we were taking a private jet and our four-year-old questioning whether we were flying international first class, I believe something had to change, she writes. Wealth also complicated her social life and family relationships until she learned to open up. One friend almost didn't invite her family to her Cirque du Soleil show because the pal worried they'd only be happy with front row seats. That shocked me, and I felt so horrible for her to think about the finances. Her friendship meant more to me than front row seats. <laughs> This is so stupid. That conversation also made me more aware of how out of touch I could be, said Risher. A yearly gift of $20,000 she had given to her brother also created ill feelings. She felt... <laughs> This is so stupid. She also felt he was unappreciative, but she later learned he simply felt awkward. We were able to connect as two people who loved and trusted one another. Risher believes it's more important than ever for the rich to start talking about money. Our silence keeps the status quo in place and keeps us from examining our relationship with money. It keeps us in our bubble and unaware. It keeps us stuck in that us versus them mindset, she said. Still, to this this day, I drive around the block looking for free parking, said Risher. I will say, come on, just park in a lot or pay an ATM fee. It takes a conscious shift to remind myself. Wow. Well, you know, I'm sure that all of the poor people in that area really appreciate you taking up one of the few free parking spaces available so you can feel more humble. <laughs> I mean, this is insane. This is insane. So your pitch to us is that it's hard to be rich. Here are the issues. And this is exactly what I would, would expect the only like issues rich people deal with would be. Oh, well, you know, I gave my brother $20,000 and he didn't seem appreciative, but it was awkward. I mean, what do you want him to do? $20,000 to a multimillionaire is nothing like do you want him to get on the floor and kiss your feet what do you want him to do like have some perspective that's so weird um now what i love is that she's so out of touch she claims that if rich people don't open up and talk about their uh wealth and being rich um it keeps us in our bubble and unaware so understand what she's saying here in order to not be in a rich person bubble she has to open up and talk about her rich she has to rich explain to us what it's like to be rich that's going to keep her out of her bubble that's going to keep her humble not actually like socializing with people who are on the lower brackets uh on the income ladder like not actually talking to the peasants it's her talking at us about how difficult it is for her to be rich that's what's going to keep her out of her bubble lady you're delusional and she literally is like co-opting the language of social justice to apply it to her lifestyle as a millionaire saying how difficult it was for her to come out Oh, well, I mean, I can only imagine. Look, when I told my family I was gay, uh, I was told uh, that I was a faggot and to kill myself, but I'm pretty sure it was more difficult for you coming out and telling people, hey, everyone, I have millions of dollars. <laughs> what the fuck? This lady is psychopathic. And I love the story about how her friends almost didn't invite her to a Cirque du Soleil show because they were worried that they wouldn't be happy with front row seats. So it's not like they didn't invite you. They did invite you. I mean, I don't know what she's thinking. And her timing is really off. Like at a time when millions of Americans are losing their jobs because of this global pandemic, at a time when we have no idea how many families will be evicted come January 1st, because Trump's moratorium on evictions expires on December 31st. So on January 1st, millions of Americans are going to have to pay months worth of rent. Otherwise, they're going to be evicted. And she's releasing this book now at this time to explain to us how difficult it is to be rich. And she is likening her experience of being rich 
to the experience of marginalized groups like the LGBTQ community and uh, black people. I mean, if your goal was to prove to us that rich people are just like everyone else, this is not going to help you out with that goal. And in that video, I forgot to mention this, but in the video we talked about earlier, she uh, discussed how in her book she's talking, even though it's a memoir, she's talking to 11 other women. Like, I think that she was trying to get us to give her like a Yas Queen because she's talking to rich women. Uh, but look, I don't care uh, what the identity is of the rich person. Um, fuck you. Pay your taxes. Stop being so fucking greedy. Stop being so narcissistic and self-centered as you are. And like, just shut the fuck up. People don't know how to put food on the table and you're complaining about whether or not you may or may not be spoiling your children. Like, read the room, lady. Read the fucking room. What is wrong with you? Like, this is exactly what you expect from a late-stage capitalist society. Like, rather than actually talking about redistributing wealth, taxing these ghouls, like, we're trying to figure out a way to create some sort of social movement to be more accepting of rich people who have everything. You're not the victim. You're not being discriminated against. And uh, to the extent that you are discriminated against, I think it's good. Uh, because we live in a society where people are encouraged to flaunt their wealth. Like, go to YouTube's trending page and you see, like, a bunch of dickhead influencers, like, with a thumbnail of them and a Lamborghini saying, I just bought my friend a new car or I'm giving away this private island that I chose to buy. I mean, like, this is what we see. Like, people are flaunting their wealth. So, you know, if anything, to the extent that rich people are feeling like they should be quiet about their wealth... Um, at a time when people can't put food on the table and they're losing their jobs, I'd say, yeah, that's probably a good idea. You should probably shut the fuck up right now. And I'm sorry if that makes me uh, bigoted to tell you to shut the fuck up as a rich person. But, uh, I mean, I don't know what you want from me. Who cares? Uh, nobody cares that you are feeling, uh, you know, discriminated against because you're rich. Cry about it. Eat shit, lady. Like, fuck off.